Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Huscox coming back to you. Uh, this is my physical science eighth grade class. Uh, we are in chapter two, section two. This is the second half. We have already done ionic bonds. Uh, for those of you playing along at home, the ionic bond is a bond caused by the transfer of one atom electrons to another. When you lose electrons, you become positive. When you gain electrons, you become negative. That positive and negative causes the force of attraction. So this will finish out our atomic bonds today. Atoms can share electrons. Atoms can be both types of negative ions. If they both are negative, they both want to hold on to those electrons. It's called electron affinity. Sometimes they just share because neither one of them is strong enough to pull the electrons away from the other. When you share, we call that a covalent bond. Uh, the sharing of electrons, because the electrons are moving at almost the speed of light, is like the electrons are in both places at the same time. That nucleus of each atom has these positive charges that causes those negatives to not leave. Well, basically what happens is, if you have like, a real common one would be hydrogen, hydrogen making hydrogen gas. Well, hydrogen wants to keep its electron, wants to share an electron, so two hydrogens share. And we'll draw some out here in a little bit. So we often show how to look at covalent bonds by using electron dot diagrams. An electron dot diagram just draws in the valence electrons. So hydrogen has one valence electron. This hydrogen has one valence electron, so they make a single bond. Sometimes they're over here, sometimes those electrons are over there, but they're full because they share two electrons. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five. So what happens with nitrogen? It shares one with this hydrogen, it shares one with that hydrogen, and it shares one with that one. It actually forms three single covalent bonds. Each one of these is what I call a single covalent bond. Eventually, this is ammonia, and it looks like this. Very common in household cleaning chemicals. This is oxygen oxygen needs to share two this oxygen needs to share two carbon only has four valence electrons so it shares one there one there one there one there so there's the eight for carbon so one two three four one two three and four for the oxygen one two three and four for that oxygen you end up with what we call a double bond Each line here represents a shared pair of electrons. Nitrogen is a fun one to talk about. When nitrogen gas, which is what makes up most of the Earth's atmosphere, needs three. This nitrogen needs three. So it will actually share three sets of electrons. So there's six. So this, sometimes this six is over here. Sometimes that six is over here. One electron there. One there. So this actually forms a triple bond, often written as these three lines. Each line represents a covalent bond. Oxygen. Each hydrogen only has one to share. Oxygen would like to have eight, so it needs to share two. Here's their shared pair. This forms a, there's your bond. Oxygen. 
A molecule is a group of atoms held together by a covalent bond. It has to be covalent to be a molecule. can't be ionic. Um, some types of molecules are really just diatomic atoms, like chlorine gas, bromine gas, nitrogen gas, iodine, oxygen gas, are diatomic. In some cases, we end up with what we call a polar covalent bond. It's an unequal sharing, like the older brother or older sister that doesn't share very well. Here, oxygen is so much stronger than the hydrogen that most of the time the oxygen holds the electrons, but it does share a little bit with the younger brother hydrogen. So you end up with oxygen kind of being negative, hydrogen kind of I wrote that wrong on there. Nine, oxygen becomes negative, hydrogen becomes positive, and that ends up with our bonds. You want to hear a joke about nitric oxide? No, that's nitric oxide, by the way, like you put in your car if you had a race car. The structure of ionic and covalent bonds gives them their properties. Uh, chemical bonds like crystals and molecules are a little different. The substances, not all iconic, ionic compounds form crystals, but most do, and that's that rigid fixed structure. Um, but those crystals can separate usually by ions in water. It's called dissociation, where covalent bonds are much stronger. They hold together in water and they tend to not separate.